It is good to be in the Lord's house this morning, isn't it? It's good to have, because we've got several miracles sitting amongst us this morning. But it's real good to see Sister Faye Hash, and she is a miracle. We just give the Lord praise, honor, and glory. She was about as low as anybody can go and not leave this world. But the Lord's touched her and healed her, and she's smiling, and we're so glad to have her back with us this morning. Amen. We love her and appreciate her. Have your Bibles, turn with us to Isaiah chapter 28. You want to keep your Bibles close by your side this morning. We've got several scriptures that we're going to be looking at, the Lord willing. Again, it's good to see you in the Lord's house this morning. If there's someone that you've noticed has not been here in a while, give them a call. Let them know you love them, that you miss seeing them, that you're thinking about them. And see if you can lift them up and encourage their hearts. Isaiah 28 and verse 16. I'm going to preach for just a few moments that the Lord will allow us on the gospel of Christ, the power of God. A lot of people have just religion. and The only thing, the only power that religion has is the power to bind you. But the power of the gospel will set you at liberty. It will give you a liberty that this world cannot give, the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 28 and verse 16, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. What must we do for that reason and to receive that? He that believeth, he that believeth shall not make haste Amen. to believe. Flip over with me to the book of Romans, chapter 1. Romans, chapter 1, and verse 15 this morning. Paul speaking, anointed by the Holy Ghost, says, For as much as for as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I am not ashamed of the power of the gospel. Lord, let your word go forth, let it touch, and let it accomplish its task. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Paul says here three things. We're not going to preach those this morning, but it can preach. It is an outline. Starting at verse 14, he said, I am deader. You are to mark these in your Bibles. There's three I am's that Paul said. He first said, I am deader. And then he said, I am ready. He was deader because he knew that it was all the cause of Christ, nothing he done. He was ready to preach the gospel. And then he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Paul was ready to preach the word of God. He was ready to proclaim the gospel. We're going to be unafraid to proclaim what Christ done for me. Brother Doug, I'm not a theologian. I'm not anybody that can get in a discussion or an argument with anybody. I'm not asking you to. I don't want you to rest the scriptures with anyone. But you can tell them what Christ Jesus done in your heart and done in your life. And they can't argue with that. They can't deny that. Because when he saved me, I know he saved me. When he changed me, I know he changed me. And he made me a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things passed away. And behold, all things have become new. I know he lives. How do I know he lives? Because he lives within my heart he walks with me and he talks with me and I'm not ashamed to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ he is that precious stone he is that sure foundation 
Do you realize that the world is rocking to and fro? Have you caught on in the last few weeks that every nation in this world has told more? One against the other, the other against the other, and there is no peace and rest, regardless of how civilized. And I say that with quotations because I don't believe there's a whole lot of civilization in this world anymore. Regardless of how civilized we say the nation and people are, there are turmoil, and people do not want the right. They want those things that are wrong to please them. And we'll find more about that out as we go into Romans chapter 1. By faith in Christ Jesus, by believing, we have a sure foundation. It is not shaking ground to be a child of God. It is not shaky ground to believe in Christ. It is a sure foundation. We stand secure regardless if the world is rocking. We stand upon sure ground. How do I get there? By simply believing. You mean I don't have to say so many catechisms? I don't have to remember so many verses? I don't have to uh, talk to a priest through a door and and confess all my sins? I don't have to say so many Hail Murrays? I don't have to do so much penance? I don't have to come down and shake a preacher's hand or have my name signed in a book or be dipped in water? No, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you truly, really believe, in him you will allow him to come in and your life and your heart will be changed there will be a difference when Christ Jesus comes in by faith in Christ we are secure if all things that we know ends tomorrow in Christ I am secure if the almighty dollar quits spending tomorrow I am secure. If the economy goes bust tomorrow, I am secure. If America falls tomorrow as much as I love her, I am secure in Christ Jesus, my Lord. You see, this world is not my home. I'm going to a better place. I am a pilgrim down here. Because of these things and because of what Christ done for me, I am not ashamed of Christ Jesus. In Romans 1.16, I just read that to you. Flip with me to Mark chapter 8 and verse 38. Mark 8 and 38, he says, Whoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, Of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh and the glory of his Father with his with the holy angels. I'm not ashamed of Christ Jesus. I'm not ashamed of what he done in my life. I'm not ashamed of how he changed me and how he turned me around and the difference that he made in my life. In 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse. Seven, for God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Why should I be afraid of this world? Why should I be afraid of the things of this world? He's not given me that spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And I know the same power that saved me is the same power that will lead me home. He is able to keep that which I committed to his hand against that day, the power of God that he mentioned in Romans 1. That power, the dunamos, was the Greek word that was given there, which, which we get our word from today, dynamo. It is an inherent 
power. It is a power that reproduces itself. A dynamo will reproduce itself. It doesn't have to be plugged into anything. It, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Christ described it like this. When you come and you believe in Him and you receive Him, there is within, oh hallelujah, your body, a spring, a fountain of living water, oh hallelujah, spring it up with inside of your heart, spring it up inside of your life. It is the power of God unto salvation that will change you and make you that new creature. You see that power, it is God's power. If we had time this morning, I'd turn to page 390 and we'd sing, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. It says, would you be washed whiter than snow? Oh, hallelujah. There is power in the blood of the Lamb. Would you be made free from your sins? There is power in the blood of the Lamb. Brother Doug, you don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've done. It does not matter. You can't go low enough that God cannot reach down and His blood cannot save you. It goes down into the lowest valley and it goes up to the highest mountains. He is able to save unto the uttermost. Oh, hallelujah. It is God's power. There is to you power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb of God Almighty. We find out in 1 Peter 1 and 23 that it produces a new birth. This power of God produces a new birth. Christ said you must be born again. Thank God He changes us and that new birth comes about in our heart and in our life. Ephesians chapter 1. You can read it when you get home. It tells us that the gospel gives salvation. It brings salvation to everyone who believes upon Him, who trusts in Him, who looks to Him, who stands in Christ Jesus. That power of God gives and brings salvation to our heart and into our life. Ephesians 2 and 8 tells us for by grace are you saved through works, through coming to church. Because my family's been a member of the church of God or whatever the shingle is upon your church. They've been members for so long and and because of that then that I have salvation and I have grace. No. How is it? For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself. It is by believing and trusting in the Word of God. Amen. A lot of people say, oh, I believe that there is a God and that's good enough. Well, this same book tells us that the devils believe and fear and tremble they believe in God, but they had not placed their faith in what God said. And when we place our faith and we truly believe, then that power comes into our heart and it changes our life. In Romans chapter 10, you can look that with me. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, you've heard these words many times before. So then faith cometh by Hearing. Brother Doug, why is there a lot of things I shouldn't listen to? Why do you talk about there's places I ought not go, there's things I ought not do, there's things I ought not listen to because faith cometh by hearing? Well, those things don't affect me, that's a lie. Oh, don't throw it back at me. They affect you. You can listen to all that junk you want to. Uh, Brother Doug, I don't listen to the head banging. Well, let me tell you something. You listen to the lyrics one time. You want your children to live in that mess? You want your ch children to live in that trash? No. Well, why are we going down the road clapping to it and, and listening to it and, and, and jarring around to trash? Oh, you didn't see these coming, did you? 
Them holiness preachers will throw things in every once in a while. Why are you loud on your box? You know how come you don't have victory in your life? Because you're hearing the wrong thing. You're not listening to the Word of God. You're tuning him out until Sunday morning and you tune him in. And as soon as you get out the door, you tune him again. I wonder how many on Sunday mornings got to change the radio channel. Got to take the CD out. I'm going to go on. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. To allow that word to come in. You see that dynamo, that power of the gospel. It generates, it establishes us. And it generates faith. So that we believe deeper and further. The just shall live by faith. Oh hallelujah. And from faith to faith we walk in him. Romans 16 and 25 along this same Fault, Romans 16 and 25, he says this, Now to him that is a power to establish you. I see Christians that are in and out. Or should I say so-called Christians. They're on top of the mountain this week and they're on the bottom the next. Now we all have our problems. I'm not always on top of the mountain. You don't believe me? Ask David back there that works with me. I hit some low points sometimes. But he establishes me. I stand in him and in him alone. And I'm not one moment walking for him and the next moment walking back, but I hold to his hand and that power that is within me, regardless if I feel like acting and doing like I'm sure, that power, that dynamo generates faith and it establishes me in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel of Christ. The power of God. You see, I have been set at liberty it breaks the chains that binds me. John 8 and 32. Don't take time because you've heard that so many times. But the truth shall make you free. When you hear the truth, when you receive the gospel, and you accept the gospel, praise God, you have been made free in Christ Jesus. It abolishes death in 2 Timothy. We won't take time to turn there this morning. Chapter 1, verses 9 through 10. He tells us that it abolishes death. I no longer have to fear death. Regardless of what happens to me today or tomorrow, I know in whom I believe, in whom I trust, that He is able to keep me against that day. And I know that I have a better place to go. It has brought life and immortality into me. I know what living is all. Until you know Christ Jesus, you don't know what life is. I've seen people drunk out of their mind. I've been around it. I had four uncles that it killed. Alcohol killed. I've seen it. I know about it. I know what the things of this world is. And they're drunk out of their mind. But yet they think they're really living. They think they're really enjoying life. And man, this is the gusto. And every time it takes just a little more life from them. And it takes a little more life from them. And what they are doing is tied. And they don't even realize it because Satan has them so blinded and so drunk on the things of this world that they do not realize that life is being sucked from them. But thanks be to God, that river of life, oh hallelujah, that is flowing in my soul, that dynamo of the gospel of Jesus, Jesus Christ adds life and immortality. I know what living is about. Until you know Jesus Christ, you cannot know life. The power of peace. This gospel brings the power of peace. In this power, we have peace that passes understanding. 
I got to quickly draw to a close, but I've been pastoring here now going on 34 years. And you've walked with me and I've walked with you. Trips that are hard to make. I've seen things come your way. And when I heard it had come your way, I thought, God, what am I going to say? How, How can I give comfort? I've seen situations come your way and I thought, God, this will... And I'm human. And I thought, God, this will just destroy them. There's no way that they can stand. But then I've seen the Holy Ghost of God. I've seen the devil think that he had some of you. But then I've seen the Holy Ghost of God. Woo! That dynamo, that power of God that passeth understanding reach down and bring a peace that passeth understanding in His power We have the world. What's the cry of the world? What's the cry of all the protesters? What's the cry of those who are not protesting? We want peace. We want peace. We want peace. There is only one way to have peace. And that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is through the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is fullness, Romans 15 and 29 says, And I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. I'm glad there is fullness of blessings. We look around in this day and time, we're human. We see things in this world that we think, Man, that's wonderful, I'd love to have that. That would bring me happiness, that would just... Fulfill my life. No, it wouldn't. The second you got it home and you got tore into it or you drove it down the road and it got a little mud or you drove it to the, to the parking lot and you got a little den in it, the wife's going to be hitting your husbands. I won't get in on yours. I'm picking on you. Then that fullness would be gone, wouldn't it? That joy. But you see, there is a power in the gospel of Jesus Christ that brings fullness of blessings. Regardless of what the world dumps upon me, He brings those blessings. Who does it bring it to? What did He say? Let's flip back and look what we read in Romans 1 and 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To everyone that believeth. To everyone who receives and accepts the gospel of Jesus Christ. I heard someone this week and I'm drawn to a close. I heard a minister this week as he was preaching. And he said these words, and when I first heard them, I thought, I don't know about that, but listen to it and let it sink in. The gospel was not given to save civilization. It wasn't given to save civilization. The gospel was given to save men from. Civilization. We think we can make things better. The government thinks they can make things better. And they go in and they build all things new, but man's hearts are not changed. And those new things are decayed and destroyed. And the same problems are there. Government will never bring about the civilization that we want until man's hearts find Christ Jesus our Lord. The gospel was given to save man. I heard this same minister this week. And I'm pretty sure he called the minister's name, but it doesn't matter.
what his name was. I didn't know him, and I'm pretty sure you wouldn't know him either. But he'd been called from a life of such degradation, such sin. He had done things that you didn't talk about in public. But Christ had reached down and lifted him up and made him a soldier of the cross that he was not ashamed of the gospel. Just like the devil likes to do. You know what one of his greatest tools is? Condemnation. You see, Christ has not come into the world to condemn us. He'll convict us and thank God He does. Condemnation. Minister got to the service that morning and some well-known individual that knew Him well in his life left him an unsigned letter. And it said, are you not ashamed to stand in that pulpit when you've done all these things and just as the devil will do, began to name all those sins that he had done starting in his early years. And at the end, again, he wrote, are you not ashamed to stand in the pulpit? The minister stood up that morning heartbroken. Was not angry. But he stood there and read that letter. Every sin, everything that the old devil tried to throw in his face. And all these things, he said, I'm guilty. And he said, you better know I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of those things. Oh, hallelujah. But I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because I stand you before you today, an individual that has been saved. And when Jesus Christ looks down at me, he sees the blood of his dear son, Christ Jesus. And I stand justified. I stand just as if I never had those marks against me. I stand a child of Almighty God. And I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can you stand this morning, Father? Well, now, glory. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad this morning. I... <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, my children, there is yet power. Oh, hallelujah. Wonder working power in my blood. I still can save unto the uttermost. Do not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Proclaim this gospel to the end of the world. Let every man, every woman, every child hear that the blood still flows to the lowest mountain. Let everyone know that I am able to save unto the uttermost. Proclaim my name. Stand in my power. Do not be defeated, but stand in my victory, saith the Lord. All I can tell you this morning is this altar is open. Holy Ghost has done gave the invitation. If you want to stand back and not get anything God has for you, go ahead and stand back. But I want what God's got for me this morning. Come around this altar quickly. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, no greater time than right now to know Him. 
If you need victory in your life, the old devil's been trying to beat you down. Right around this altar, there's victory. If you need sanctification, right around this altar, there's sanctification. If you need the gift of the Holy Ghost of God, oh, hallelujah. If you need heaven to open and to come down and baptize you and feel you running over, this altar is open and my God is able and ready this morning.